So here we have the uh, new Lord Chancellor, Robert Buckland, who has the speech in his ceremonial purse. We'll present it to the Queen. Steps back one and then turns around. and members of the House of Commons. My government's priority has always been to secure the United Kingdom's departure from the European Union on the 31st of October. My government intends to work towards a new partnership with the European Union based on free trade and friendly cooperation. My ministers will work to implement new regimes for fisheries, agriculture and trade, seizing the opportunities that arise from leaving the European Union. An immigration bill ending free movement will lay the foundation for a fair, modern and global immigration system. My government remains committed to ensuring that resident European citizens who have built their lives in and contributed so much to the United Kingdom have the right to remain. The bill will include measures that reinforce this commitment. Steps will be taken to provide certainty, stability and new opportunities for the financial services and legal sectors. My government's new economic plan will be underpinned by a responsible fiscal strategy, investing in economic growth while maintaining the sustainability of the public finances. Measures will be brought forward to support and strengthen the National Health Service, its workforce and resources, enabling it to deliver the highest quality care. New laws will be taken forward to help implement the National Health Service's long-term plan in England and to establish an independent body to investigate serious health care incidents. My government will bring forward proposals to reform adult social care in England to ensure dignity in old age. My ministers will continue work to reform the Mental Health Act to improve respect for and care of those receiving treatment. My government is committed to addressing violent crime and to strengthening public confidence in the criminal justice system. New sentencing laws will see that the most serious offenders spend longer in custody to reflect better the severity of their crimes. Measures will be introduced to improve the justice system's response to foreign <coughs> national offenders. My government will work to improve safety and security in prisons and to strengthen the rehabilitation of offenders. Proposals will be brought forward to ensure that victims receive the support they need and the justice they deserve. Laws will be introduced to ensure that the parole system recognises the pain to victims and their families caused by offenders refusing to disclose information relating to their crimes. A new duty will be placed on public sector bodies, ensuring they work together to address serious violence. Police officers will be provided with the protections they need to keep the population safe. They will also be awarded the power to arrest individuals who are wanted by trusted international partners. 
My government will bring forward measures to protect individuals, families, and their homes. Legislation will transform the approach of the justice system and other agencies to victims of domestic abuse and minimize the impact of divorce, particularly on children. My ministers will continue to develop proposals to improve internet safety and will bring forward laws to implement new building safety standards. My ministers will ensure that all young people have access to an excellent education, unlocking their full potential and preparing them for the world of work. My government will take steps to make work fairer, introducing measures that will support those working hard. To help people plan for the future, measures will be brought forward to provide simpler oversight of pension savings. To protect people's savings for later life, new laws will provide greater powers to tackle irresponsible management of private pension schemes. To ensure that the benefits of a prospering economy reach every corner of the United Kingdom, my ministers will bring forward a national infrastructure strategy. This will set out a long-term vision to improve the nation's digital, transport and energy infrastructure. New legislation will help accelerate the delivery of fast, reliable and secure broadband networks to millions of homes. An aviation bill will provide for the effective and efficient management of the United Kingdom's airspace. Proposals on railway reform will be brought forward. A white paper will publish, be published to set out my government's ambitions for unleashing regional potential in England and to enable decisions that affect local people to be made at a local level. My government is committed to establishing the United Kingdom as a world leader in scientific capability and space technology. Increased investment in science will be complemented by the development of a new funding agency, a more open visa system and an ambitious national space strategy. My ministers remain committed to protecting and improving the environment for future generations. For the first time, environmental principles will be enshrined in law. Measures will be introduced to improve air and water quality, tackle plastic pollution and restore habitats so plants and wildlife can thrive. Legislation will also create new legally binding environmental improvement targets. A new world leading independent regulator will be established in statute to scrutinize environmental policy and law, investigate complaints and take enforcement action. Proposals will also be brought forward to promote and protect the welfare of animals including banning imports from trophy hunting. The integrity and prosperity of the Union that binds the four nations of the United Kingdom is of the utmost importance to my government. My ministers will bring forward measures to support citizens across all the nations of the United Kingdom. My government remains committed to working with all parties in Northern Ireland to support the return of devolved government and to address the legacy of the past. My government will take steps to protect the integrity of democracy and the electoral system in the United Kingdom. My government will continue to invest in our gallant armed forces. My ministers will honour the armed forces covenant and the NATO commitment to spend at least 2% of national income on defence. As the United Kingdom leaves the European Union, my government will ensure that it continues to play a leading role in global affairs, defending its interests and promoting its values. 
My government will be at the forefront of efforts to solve the most complex international security issues. It will champion global free trade and work alongside international partners to solve the most pressing global challenges. It will prioritize tackling climate change and ensuring that all girls have access to 12 years of quality education. Members of the House of Commons, estimates for the public services will be laid before you. My Lords and members of the House of Commons, other measures will be laid before you. I pray that the blessing of Almighty God may rest upon your councils. The Lord Chancellor approaches Her Majesty and takes uh, delivery of the speech, puts it back in uh, the official purse and uh, makes his way back down the steps. The Queen having delivered the Queen's speech to open this new session of Parliament uh, in 2019. The Prince of Wales looking on uh, next to Her Majesty and the pages of honour are now ready for the procession back to the robing room where the Queen will prepare to leave the Palace of Westminster and return to Buckingham Palace. Members of the judiciary, very prominent in the House of Lords today, and the, uh, the bishops too. We saw glimpses of them earlier, including the former Bishop of London, Dr. Richard Charters and others, also taking their places. And many former government ministers from the House of Commons, of course, who have become life peers with uh, a wealth of experience in terms of parliamentary and political affairs who've seen many of these ceremonies in the past and we spoke to two of them earlier uh, Lord Fowler who's here today and uh, Dame Margaret Beckett who is still in the House of Commons so as the crown is being carried out um, my guests are still with me here let's stay on the pictures um, but uh, I'll bring in my colleague Laura Kinsberg our political editor just for a thought there on the content of the speech that the Queen has just delivered a very long shopping list of all the things that Boris Johnson would like to do. Um, some of them very much bread and butter issues, whether that's more funding for schools or trying to spend more money on the NHS or coming up with, at long last, a new way of organising care for the elderly, which is something that successive governments have struggled to grapple with. But the unsaid reality, of course, as well as that shopping list, is that the biggest question hanging over is what the, Her, the Her Majesty said with great certainty at the beginning of the speech, we will be leaving the European yes. Union at the end of this month. There's no way that anyone in this square mile can be sure that that will happen. And whether it happens and how it happens is a much bigger influence than anything that we've just heard being said. That was literally the first <laughs> sentence of the speech. Indeed, because it's the government's first priority. But there is nothing at this stage that the government is setting out in legislation that will either make that less or more likely. That will all come down, first of all, to the outcome of talks this week in Brussels. And then what Parliament does with either a deal or lack of one in the next few days. And with, as these moments of history unfold in front of us, something much more unusual, at this weekend we expect Parliament to be gathering to try to make head or tail of what actually happens next. That will be on Saturday, of course, and uh, as, uh, as you were mentioning earlier, Laura, that will be the first Saturday sitting in nearly 40 years. The MPs are now making their way back to the House of Commons as the Queen makes her way into the robing room. And uh, having listened to that speech, uh, lots of them, including many backbenchers, making their way back. Diana, but there, of course, a frontbencher. Uh, Rose uh, Hudson-Wilkins there, the Speaker's chaplain next to the Prime Minister. And, uh, the rush back to the Commons Chamber because, of course, the debate on the Queen's speech will start uh, in a short while. Sir Alan Duncan, the uh, former